Okay, so in the last class, we were talking about the objective in financial management. So, actually, can you, this light is flashing, so can you turn off just this one? So, the objective in financial management, we said, is to increase the wealth of the uh, shareholders, the stockholders, by increasing the stock price, trying to get a better stock price. And also, we have to think about other stakeholders. Stakeholders are people who have an interest in the organization, or are affected by the organization. So we looked at main stakeholders being the stockholders, society, financial markets, and bondholders. We looked at those four main stakeholders, right? Society, other stakeholders could include employees, customers, NGOs, okay? But we were just focusing on four main stakeholders who can get some effect by the company. <laughs> so the last time we also talked about the corporate governance and corporate governance is how do the uh, shareholders, the owners, can control the uh, managers. So, the main ways they control the managers, we said, was the... Can anybody remind me? What is the main way that the... Uh, managers are controlled by the owners. How do they control the managers? Two main ways. Can anybody tell me? How do the owners control the managers of a company? If you are a stockholder in the company, how do you control the managers? The annual general meeting, yes. And we use board of directors, okay? The board of directors is a group of people appointed by the stockholders, okay? To control the managers, okay? But we were talking about why these things may not work well, okay? So we said that the annual general meeting doesn't work well because small stockholders don't go to the meetings, okay? And we explained about institutional investors in the last class, large institutional investors. It's a person or an organization that trades a large amount of securities. So we should understand the institutional investor, okay? That's important, we'll see again in the course. Small investor, me, okay? Do you understand the difference between an individual and an institute? What does institute mean? Group or organization, right? So individual investor, just I buy stuff. Institutional investor, organization, like a bank or a fund. Do you understand fund? Yes. Fund is put money together to use for a certain purpose. Okay? So those organizations, let's say that we make a fund. You guys all buy a stock and I make a fund. I'm the fund manager, okay? So now I own a lot of stock in the company, okay? I'm representing all of you guys. So I'm an institutional investor. But unfortunately, the institutional investor just agrees with the manager most of the time, okay? The institutional investor doesn't push the management much. They just sell the stock and go to another company if there's a problem. So we can see here that the fund managers just support the, man man the manager of the company. Okay? Board of directors doesn't work well either. So directors are very busy. Most directors, they are directors on four or five different boards, right? 
They also have a job somewhere else. So they only spend a few hours a week, average of about four hours a week, working for the company. Okay? They're also not qualified in the area. Okay? They're elected, the board of directors are elected at the stockholders AGM. But sometimes they don't have the qualification. I could be on the board of directors in a, in a financial industry in the bank. But maybe I don't know much about the financial industry. Okay? Maybe I'm a doctor or IT professional. Other problems, some directors are insiders. An insider is, I'm the manager of the company and I appoint my wife on the board of directors. Do you think that's okay? I'm the manager of the company and my wife is on the board of directors. Is that okay? Hmm? Why not? Why is it not okay? <coughs> you use the force hmm? to have someone on the board of directors. You use the vote? Yes, but what's the problem with having my wife on the board of directors and I'm the manager? There's no connection. Yes, but what's the job of the board of directors? To control the manager. To control the managers, right? So is my wife going to control me properly? No. no. Maybe not. Not as much as an independent person or an outsider. Okay? Other insiders can be my golf buddy. Okay? I point my friend on the board of directors. Or my family. Or just some connection with me. The CEO. Okay? Like my sister-in-law. My brother's wife. Put her on the board of directors. Okay? Should it, should it be the case? This is called insiders, but it does happen. It does happen in some companies. In most boards, the CEO is the chairperson of the board. Okay? So that it means that the CEO decides the agenda at meetings, what they're going to discuss. There are some communication failures. This was important in the financial crisis of Lehman's Brothers. So the director is at the top of the organization, they can't communicate well with the people at the front line. Do you understand the front line? So in the financial crisis, the people in the front line were selling the risky products. Okay? And maybe they could see the house prices were going to go down suddenly. But this message didn't get up to the top. So the message has to go through different channels, a lot of different layers gets to the board of directors, okay? Here's the front line. So, message didn't get through properly. So here, the front line guy said, oh, this is very risky, okay? He told his boss, this is very risky, okay? We are selling this product, but this product is very risky. I don't think it's a good idea. But then the man, this guy says to his boss, it's just risky. This product is risky. Then this guy tells his boss, Oh, it's a little bit risky, but I think it's okay. Right? Then he tells his boss, mm, Just maybe there's a little bit of risk, but we don't think so. And then this guy tells the board of directors, Everything's fine. <laughs> no problem. Okay? Do you understand the communication failure? Yeah. Did you ever play Chinese whispers? Chinese whispers, I give you a sentence to say and you whisper to her. Yes, yes. And by the time it gets there, it's a different, different uh, message. Okay? So this was a problem. The board of directors, they are trying to control the stockholders, but they don't, they, they don't get the proper communication. Okay? Another problem is groupthink. There's not much confrontation. We'll explain groupthink here. Groupthink is a mode of thinking that occurs in highly cohesive, high status groups in which the desire to reach unanimous agreement, unanimous means nobody disagrees, everybody agrees, overrides the motivation to adopt proper rational decision making processes. So in the financial crisis we had all white males, 50 year old male, right? Most of them graduated from the same universities, okay? A similar universities, so they had the same kind of thinking. And they all wanted to be in agreement. They didn't want to make the disagreement. So this is groupthink problem. It can also happen on the board of directors, okay? Even though I think there might be a problem, 
I don't say that. Or because we all have the same background, we don't see the problem. We're too similar. So another good idea for the board of directors is to put diverse people, right? Not just men, also have more women, okay? Not just white males, men in the US for example, males from different backgrounds, okay? Not just people from the Ivy League University, people from other backgrounds too, with working experience, okay? Not just people who are in just the one industry, but maybe people also from different industry. Even include somebody from the union, workers' union, so we can have more different thinking. So because of all these problems, board of directors may not work well. Most people think it doesn't usually work well. Even though that's their job, they're appointed by the stockholders to control the managers, it may not work very well. Okay? So what are some ways we can improve the corporate governance? One way, make managers own the stock in the company. If managers own a reasonable amount of stock in the company, then they might think more about maximizing the stock price. Okay? So these days companies are paying managers more in stock. But some companies pay with options. But options is not a good idea. Because option means the manager has the option, the choice to buy the stock or not in the future. So if the price goes down, they still have the choice not to buy the stock. So it's better just to pay them in stock or give them their bonus in stock. Then they, and to make a rule that they can't sell the stock. Okay? So we can pay the managers in stock and they can't sell the stock for three years or five years. So now they have more interest in increasing the stock price and the company doing well. We can try to improve the performance of the board of directors. Right? More independent directors. Less insiders. There should be more direct input from groups such as employees, suppliers and customers. So there was a new idea for corporate governance called network governance. Where instead of this system, we change a little bit. And we have just the one or two lines like this. And then the board of directors. All right, so here we have the employees. Employees have a representative. The representative talks directly to the board of directors. Okay? We have suppliers. Suppliers have a representative who talks directly to the board of directors. Okay? We have customers. Somebody represents the customers, talks directly. Okay? So this may be a better way for the board of directors to work. Okay? Because they, they're not getting the proper communication in the normal situation. So if we make groups and representatives can help. Then we can also have more activist investors. So we want investors to be more involved in the company. Okay? Uh, sometimes we have, do you know, pension fund? Young Gun Fund? Sometimes they're more activists. They tell the companies like, you shouldn't do this or you should do this. Okay? Sometimes rich people or institutional investors they get very involved in the company, they're very active, right? They try to buy a lot of stock and change the board of directors and change the managers, okay? So more activist investors is better. If the company is not doing well, uh, we can improve <coughs> it. So this is the corporate governance, mainly talking about the relationship between the stockholders and the managers, okay? Making sure that the managers do their job properly. <coughs> the next one is the stockholders and the bondholders. So, bondholders and st stockholders have different ideas about some things. So here are the main differences. Okay? We'll study about this a little bit more later too. So, it's important to understand the different idea of bondholders and stockholders. Okay? So risky projects. Who do you think likes risky projects more? The owner of the company or the bank that lends the company the money? Who, who prefers risky projects? Does the bank want the company to take a risky project or a safe project? Safe project. Safe project. Does the owner want to take a very safe project or maybe they want to take a risky project? Risky project. Maybe they want to make more profit, so they might want to take a riskier project. Okay? 
So the bondholders or the lenders do not like high-risk investments. They would like to lend money to you to make a very safe investment. Even if you make a loss, maybe you can still pay back the money. Okay? Once you don't go bankrupt. The only way the lenders lose is you go bankrupt. So they're happy for you to make no profit if you can pay them back the money. It's safe. But you want to make more profit. Okay? The debt to equity ratio. What do you think? Do lenders like companies with a high debt to equity ratio or low debt to equity ratio? Low, right? You have a 90% loan for your restaurant. I don't want to lend you any more money. Same reason, you have a higher chance of bankruptcy if you have a high loan already. Okay? So, uh, lenders want to lend, you have 0% debt, I'll, I'll lend you money. Okay? I want to lend money to companies with low debt level. <coughs> dividend policy. So, do we pay dividends or not? Do you think that banks want you to pay dividends or keep the cash in the company? Keep the cash. Keep the cash, right? Banks want you to save the cash in your savings account and then you can pay back the loan. Okay? So bondholders want the cash to be kept in the firm. Okay, what about stockholders? Do they want to get some of the profits for themselves? Yes, so they want to get paid dividends. So in this case, uh, the stockholders can take advantage of the bondholder. Do you understand to take advantage of in English? Take advantage of somebody? Like I trust you, right? But then you take advantage of my trust. Okay? It means that you use my trust to get some advantage for yourself. So that could be the case. You could, I could be the bank and you tell me, oh, I'm going to have debt to equity ratio of 50%. Okay? So I give you a loan. And then later, you go and get another loan and make 90% debt to equity ratio. Okay? Now I'm not happy. I gave you the loan, agreed at the 50% debt to equity ratio, but now you've got another loan and now your company is much more risky. Okay? So just for any of those things. So the bondholders have to trust the stockholders. Something we can do is we can protect ourselves by making a covenant. Covenant is a legal agreement making restrictions on what stockholders can do. So we can make an agreement, written agreement. If your debt to equity goes over 50%, you need to pay me back the money. Okay? Or, or we increase the interest rate. So we can make that kind of agreements. This is also based on trust because firms can lose their reputation. If you treat me unfairly, the bank or the bondholder, then it, I'm not going to give you a loan the next time. Okay? So this is important. The, stock, the company has to treat the bondholders and banks well because if they don't, they're going to have trouble in the future to get money. So this is not such a big problem. Okay, because bondholders can write covenants to protect themselves and firms could lose their reputation. So this is probably the least, the lowest of the conflict between the stakeholders. Okay, uh, the next one is the company and the financial market. So we already talked about efficient markets, okay? So efficient markets, we talked about that all the information is available to everybody Everybody uses the information intelligently, so the price is the correct price. But, like we said, in practice, there are some holes in the efficient market theory. One problem is, managers can delay the information. Don't tell the markets the information. According to the efficient market theory, everybody has the same information. Okay? But if we think of an example, a company which is doing gold mining, <laughs> Do you understand gold mining? Yes. Then they find gold. Okay, now they, they are not allowed to trade the stock until they make the public announcement. Normally what happens is they make the public announcement. While they are making the public announcement, all the people in the company is buying the stock. Okay? The second after they start making the public announcement, we found gold. People is waiting to buy the stock. 
If you buy the stock before they make the public announcement, that's called insider trading, and that's illegal. Okay? So you can, your company finds gold, right? You can't just start buying all the stock in your company. You have to tell the public first, it's a public company, then you can buy the stock after you tell the public. Okay? But sometimes the companies delay telling the public, and then they leak the information to their friends or their wives or their cousins, right? Like, oh, maybe it's a good idea to buy the stock. I won't tell you why exactly, but maybe you should think about buying stock in our company. Okay? And they delay, 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 and then announce to the public. So that can happen. Also, the bad news. If you have bad news as a manager, when is the best time to tell the public? You have some bad news. Your company had a big accident, and you're going to lose a lot of money. When is the best time to tell the public this news? After sell your stock. Hmm? Well, that's illegal, right? You're not allowed to sell your stock before you tell the public. You tell the public, and then you can sell your stock. Right after tell. But what about the time of the week? Are you going to tell them Monday morning? Oh, Friday yeah. evening? Friday, Friday afternoon. Why? Why would you tell them on Friday evening? Stock market doesn't work every weekend. Yeah, so what? So what? So they it opens on Monday. Well, while that stops, you can prepare, like, how can you restore? <laughs> yeah, so you can make some plan yeah. over the two days. And also, people tend to overreact to news. Right? People overreact to news. So if they have two days to think about it, they might think, oh, actually, it's not that bad. Okay? So some companies do that. They, sometimes they, they give lie. They give intentionally misleading information. Right? Do you understand misleading? Misleading means, like, not so much false, but just we're trying to trick you. Okay? Maybe we use accountancy to say, last year we made a big profit. Right? But actually what happened was, we made a profit two years ago, but we didn't do the accounting in that way. So we can try to mislead, they can try to mislead the people. So do managers delay bad news? This is the change in the stock price. On Friday, stock price tends to go down more, right? Than the other days. Why? Because the managers released the bad news on Friday, right? To give people some time to think in. So this is kind of evidence that managers are delaying the information to the people. <laughs> so we already discussed in the last time, markets are not that efficient. Investors are irrational. Investors overreact to news. Financial markets can be manipulated by insiders. We always have cases of insider trading, right? People who have the information use it to their advantage, okay? Uh, some investors are short-sighted. They don't think about the long-term effects. So let's discuss this question with your partner. Following and worrying about daily stock prices in the market will lead companies towards short-term decisions at the expense of long-term value. I agree or I don't agree. So discuss with your partner. Okay, so hands up, who says A? A, I agree. 
Hands up who says B, I do not agree. Okay. So, it depends on investors, right? It could be A or B, because the answer is it depends on investors, right? People buying the stock. Are the people that buying the stock just thinking about short-term profit? If the people buying the stock are just thinking about short-term profit, then it will lead us to make short-term decisions, A. Okay? But if investors in the market are thinking, no, I'm thinking about the long term, then it's going to be B. Okay? So probably we're going to lean more towards B. We have short-term traders who are day traders who sit in front of their computer and buy and sell the stock on a daily basis, right? Or weekly basis. But we have perhaps more investors who are long-term investors. So let's look at this kind of evidence that we have long-term investors. One example is there are hundreds of startup and small companies. Startup companies don't make any profit in their first year, their second year, or their third year, right? But they get a lot of money on financial markets. They're not making any profit now, right? But people expect them to create profit in the future. Okay? Why? Because they think they have good human capital, right, or good technology, but they're not making profit now, but they will in the future, okay? We studies suggest that low uh, profit to earning stocks are underpriced re relative to high PE stocks, so we should understand profit to earnings ratio, okay? So for example, or oh, sorry, price to earnings ratio, for example, a company is trading at $43 a share and earnings over the last 12 months were $2 a share. The price to earnings ratio would be 22.5. Okay? So our stock price is this, our profit last year was this. This is our price to earnings ratio, stock price to earnings. People often look at this when they're deciding to buy stocks. Okay? If the stock price is very high and the earnings are very low, are you going to buy the stock? No, right? If the stock price is very low and the earnings is very high, yes. So if we looked at the, the S&P 500 the last time and we saw that it was like this and these days it's very high. So right now it has very high uh, profit to earnings ratio. So that's why maybe it might come down again, right? Currently, the profit to earnings ratios is at quite high level. So then investors might think, well, it might come down again. So it's a way of looking at uh, stocks. Okay? So uh, the market response to research and development and investment is generally positive. So we can look at this graph here. So we make an announcement about R&D. R&D is not going to make us any short-term profit. R&D is going to be long-term. Do you understand R&D? Yeah. Research and development. For example, we're making a new drug, new medicine. It's going to take five years to do the R&D. Only after five years we start to make a profit. So if investors are just thinking about short-term profit, they're, going, they're not going to be that happy about the R&D investment. But if they're thinking long-term, then they respect the R&D investment. So we can find R&D investments. This is the stock price goes up usually on the day it's announced. And this is the month. The month it's announced, the stock price goes up more. Okay? So this is some kind of evidence that investors are thinking long term. Okay? Company enjoy, announces a joint venture. Okay? May not be good in the short term, these things. But good in the long term. And the stock price goes up. So investors can understand companies are doing things for the long term. Okay? So perhaps we can lean here more towards B. Okay? Because the, stock pro the investors are thinking about the long term, managers don't have to make short term decisions. Right? They can make long term decisions about R&D or those things. And then the investors understand and the investors can buy the stock and the stock price can increase. Okay? So, do you have any question about this part? Then the last one is uh, firms and society. 
So just look at your book on page uh, 33 in your book. We're going to read a short part of story from the book, Stockholders and Society. So just I'll read here on page 33. So the interest between what is beneficial for the firm and what is beneficial for society can be clearly in conflict. One example of a health and safety case is the case of Ford Pinto in the 70s. Ford released a new car, but crash tests revealed a serious issue in the gas tank. Ford made a cost-benefit analysis. It would cost 45 million to pay compensation to the people. Do you understand compensation? Money. Pay the faulty gas tank, basically, if the car would crash, it would go on fire very quickly. Usually the car, after it crashes, shouldn't go on fire immediately. Maybe it takes a few minutes, right? But just if it crashed, the gas tank would go on fire immediately. Uh, then, if they're going to fix all the problems, they have to take back all the cars and fix the problems. It's very expensive. It would cost them $137 million to fix. This is in the 70s, so that would be billions of dollars today. So. As the second option seemed to indicate a lower financial loss for the firm and a higher stock price, they made the unethical decision not to fix the flaw. Okay? They made a financial decision. This is what's best for the company, financially. Don't fix the problem and pay the compensation. Okay? But in the end, they have to pay much more in compensation. And also, their reputation was damaged. So this is an example of how we can have a conflict between the firm and society. Okay? One idea is health and safety. The firm makes a safer product, it's better for society, but it may cost more money for the firm. Okay? So we can have this kind of conflict here. So, in theory, all the costs and benefit associated with the firm's decision can be traced back to the firm. But in practice, sometimes, our financial decision can make a cost which doesn't come back to the firm. Okay? Companies these days, a big issue is environmental costs, pollution, health costs. Okay? We make more profit if we don't care about the environment. Is that true? <coughs> Why? If we have to use the renewable energy or we have to dispose of our waste properly, we have to use a different way of doing things to save water or save energy, maybe it's more expensive. Of course, companies can do good things for society by creating employment. Okay. So, sometimes a firm might think its product is good for society, but they discover afterwards there was large cost, like asbestos. Asbestos was a material they put in the wall in the 70s. It caused some health problem. They didn't know. Okay. So, let's discuss this with your partner. Assume you work for Disney and you have an opportunity to open a store in an inner city neighborhood. Do you understand inner city? City center? The store is expected to lose about a million dollars a year, a year, but it will create much needed employment in the area. It's a very poor area in the city center. Usually in the US, city center area is poorer. Suburbs are richer. Okay? Would you open the store, yes or no? And then, if yes, would you tell your stockholders and let them vote? If no, how would you respond to stockholders asking you? You're not living up to your social responsibility. So discuss with your partner. What are you going to do, yes or no? And then answer the second question based on your first answer. So, uh, just in the last class, there were some people who had circled as attended, but when I called out their names, they weren't here. So I already explained in the first week.
those people are going to lose more marks now for attendance. Okay? So just don't check anybody else's name because they could end up losing more marks if you check their name. Okay? Just check your own name. Okay? And don't leave on your desk. There is you know more than ten minutes left, that's enough time to go around. So don't you know just do it quickly and pass to the next person. Okay, so uh, hands up who would say yes, they're going to open the store, yes. Right? So you said yes. So what are you going to say to your stockholders? Your stockholders say, what are you doing? You're losing a million dollars. What are you going to say to them? You're the manager. I'm the stockholder. What? Are you crazy? Our company is losing a million dollars just to create some jobs in the city. It may not create much profits. Uh, short term. Uh, it can create uh, uh, much uh, 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 success. Uh, maybe long time. How? Oh. How are we going to get success in the long term? Because uh, it creates You mean good community relations? Good news story, like advertising? And the economy will yeah, boom up. Okay. Alright, so hands up who says no? So either you say yes or no. So hands up who says no. So let's try again. Hands up who says yes? Hands up who says no? So everybody needs to put up your hand. Either it's easy, yes or no. Are you going to start this company or not? Okay, hands up who says yes. Hands up who says no. Okay, so most people are saying no. Okay? So, you know, as a financial manager, we're going to say no here. Right? No would be the correct answer. Okay? Why? Because if a company is losing too much money, the company is going to be bankrupt, and then there's going to be no jobs for anybody. Okay? So, before the other issues, we have to put the first issue, has to be, the company has to be profitable. Okay? And then we look after the other issues, because if we don't have a profitable company, the company is not existing, and no jobs. Right? If we have great jobs, people pay tax, they look after uh, other things like health and education through the tax and the profits, okay? We don't want to just sit at home and do nothing all day and say, oh, if we do something, we don't want to take a chance of doing anything bad, right? So let's just stay at home and watch TV all day, right? It's better to go out and start a company and make profits, okay? Then we can pay taxes, improve the health, improve the education, okay? We need a profitable company. But, at the same time as having a profitable company, we have to think about and consider all the other issues. Okay? But this time it's going too far. This is going too far, right? Losing a lot of money just to create some jobs, it's going too far. Okay? So we would tell our stockholders, well, we would explain this to our stockholders in the second one, right? And we would tell them we need to be profitable first, and then we can start after we're profitable, we can start to look after other things, okay? So, uh, let's review what we just talked about, the four issues. What can go wrong when we use stock price as the only objective function for stockholders, for society, for bondholders, for financial markets, okay? So discuss with your partner. We only use the stock price, what can go wrong? So look back at what we just talked about. Okay. For example, what went wrong for Ford, right? For society. Так, 
Типа, если мы используем для, для, для общества, для банка, для... Okay, so let's look at the answer. So, stockholders, in reality, stockholders can have little control over managers. Okay? So managers can put their interests first. Like, managers can give themselves a big bonus. Okay? Or a large pension payment. Or, you know, just not work properly in the company. Okay? That can go wrong. <coughs> Society, we can have social costs like health and safety. Company is only thinking about profit. Health and safety problem like Pinto. Okay? Uh, the financial markets. Okay, we can delay bad news or give misleading information. People can lose their money, okay, because of our messing about here. Okay, markets can also make mistakes. Bondholders, we explained, the bondholder can get cheated. Okay, I lent money to you. I thought you have a 50% debt to equity ratio. Then you change to 90%. Okay, so if we're only thinking about the stock price. We can have these problems. This is what can go wrong. So the, man the decision makers, the managers, can conflict with the interests of the stockholders. Bondholders may not be protected. Financial markets do not operate efficiently. The stock price does not reflect the value of the firm. Social costs can be created by just focusing on the stock price. So. The solutions are, we already explained, we can try to improve corporate governance, okay? Uh, we can choose a different objective for the firm, we said that we're not going to do that, okay? We can make managers into stockholders, protect the lenders, try to provide the information honestly and quickly to financial markets, and try to minimize the social costs. So. Uh, we can talk about each of these in, in turn. First one is uh, <coughs> managers can take advantage of stockholders. So we need to have a better control of the managers. Okay? Nowadays bondholders are trying to protect themselves more. Okay? Nowadays markets are more skeptical and punitive. So for example, Greece. Do you know Greece? Yeah. Greece is a country. Greece gave the false information to the market. Greece made the false accounting with Goldman Sachs Investment Bank together. Right? Goldman Sachs Investment Bank helped Greece to make it look like Greece had more money than it actually had. Okay? So what happened after, after financial markets found out that Greece was lying? Did they say, oh, that's Greece. Funny, haha, <laughs> Greece. They started lending. Hmm? They started lending money from yeah, They wouldn't lend the money anymore. They punished them. Okay? So the investors came on the news, the fund managers, they said, we're not lending money to Greece anymore. Okay? Greece lied to us and we're angry. So we're going to punish them. Okay? So these days the financial markets are starting to punish companies and punish countries more if they give the false information. Okay? These days uh, there's more regulations and co also customers are giving backlash to companies if the company does bad for society companies get some bad effect okay? for example Apple had a problem 
with its suppliers in China. Some people were boycotting Apple. Nike had the problem before. Okay, with using child labor, people were boycotting Nike. Nestle had a problem with selling the milk for the babies in Africa, okay, which was being mixed with dirty water. People were boycotting Nestle. So these days, customers are also getting more interested in the uh, companies. Are they doing the correct action for the environment? Okay. So managers have to think about those things too. When we're making our decisions, we have to consider all these things. So then, uh, I know there were some students who missed, maybe there was something on last Friday. So just remember that the classes are on the videos here, okay? So you can watch the last class about behavior and finance here. Okay? Diversification, behavior and finance. So also if you're finding the class challenging, it may help to read the book. Okay? Look back at the video. And also uh, this Friday, you're supposed to give me by this Friday the your your first uh, group project. You, it's individual, right? But just if you want, you can work together with your group and give me the same answers with your group, okay? Same work as your group. Uh, but do you want me to extend for one more week? Yes. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, then. So, instead of this Friday, we can have uh, next week Friday. Okay? Finish the assignment. So, just check that you checked your name today. Okay? <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to